friends and welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. If you're new here, hi, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business where I make purses and project bags. So these videos are a behind the scenes in my studio and what I do each week making new bags. And we are currently in the year of bags, year of bags. So we are making a different bag each week for this year, mainly for me to catch up and actually make a new bag each week and refill the shop, use up the fabric that I have purchased and hoarded for the last few years, and also get comfortable trying new patterns, finding the patterns that I want to make on a regular basis in order to sell things in my shop. And we also do other crafty things here as well. So I hope you have fun. And let's take a look at our project for this week. So we are making the dot dot dash bag from So Sweetness. And it's uh, another zippery bag. So lots of zippers in this one as well. There are two sizes. Last time I made the smaller size, but I tried to add another zipper and it didn't work out. Uh, let me show that to you. I don't know where I put that bag, so I will insert a picture here. When I find it, I'll take a picture and put it in here. But you can just see that it didn't quite work with the size of the bag, and I, you know, tried to alter the pattern the first time I made it. Just not a good idea. So you know how that goes with me. So I wanted to make this bag again and make it to the pattern specifications and see what it looks like. You'll see it's a little chunkier. The handles are definitely chunkier. I think I'm gonna go for this one, which is more of a handbag size. This one is quite large. And I gave the pattern a B plus last time. So the small one is nine and three quarters long by 11 tall by four deep, which is a nice size for a handbag. The large is 13 inches long by 15 tall by four deep. So that's definitely more of a tote size bag there. The fabrics that we are using this week, we are using another Rifle Paper Company fabric, which is this beautiful, this beautiful kind of tropical print. Looks like it could be a Victorian wallpaper. And then we're pairing that with a Moda Grunge. I think this is Clementine. Um, I just love using Moda Grunge for the linings of bags because it's more of a solid color, but it has this nice texture to it that you can see. It looks kind of washed, acid washed, grungy. So it just adds a nice texture to it. We're gonna pair that with our orange zippers. Also finish our Hawaiian quilt and get that on the bed because the weather has turned warm now. So I would like to switch out our winter bedspread for our new Hawaiian quilt and get that going and just change everything over, do some spring cleaning. That kind of thing so I hope you come along with me and have fun this week and let's get this fabric cut okay we are back and I found the original bag that I made so let's go over this again so we've got the dot dot dash bag I made this once what like four years ago now it's been a long time I gave it a B plus um, but part of what was wrong the first time is I Frankensteined this whole thing. So I wanted to mix them up. I wanted to have these three pockets instead of the one pocket, the one zipper, but I wanted it the size of the smaller bag. So that's why I ran into trouble. I tried to alter the pattern. It was like a complete mess. So I basically took the pattern piece, figured out like where I wanted it, where I wanted the panels. Um, and just try to make up my own Frankenstein pattern. And this is what happened. <laughs> so it's basically the size of the smaller one. I think I even made it shorter than the smaller one. And then obviously, I mean, compared to last week's pattern with the cute zipper panels and the larger panel on the bottom, this did not work out well. And I used the cork, which I don't think worked out well. So I mean, it's a fully functional bag. It's mostly well made. I had to piece the uh, cork together there, so that wasn't great either. And I love this fabric. It's just kind of sad because the front sucks. So it's like, I guess I could carry it the other way around and have it that way. 
Um, the other thing that I changed was the straps. So these straps are actually supposed to be one and a half inches, and this is supposed to be one and a half inches, so it more fully takes up this space. And if you can see it there, it's just a bulkier handle, and it kind of aligns better with the gusset. Um, I just didn't have the hardware for it, so I, and I made my own strap. It's supposed to be an adjustable strap, but I made my own strap, and I made it with cork on one side and fabric on the other side, which is something I like to do with, um, when I use cork, is, because uh, it's not as bulky that way, if you have fabric on the other side. So that's what I did with that. I just looked at my hardware, and I have one and a half inch um, rectangle rings, but I don't have a one and a half inch slider. So I would like to make the bulkier handles. I think they look better. They fit in better with the size of the bag. So I'm going to run to Joann's um, before I cut out the handle. I'm going to run to Joann's and see if I can find the slider in one and a half inch. I don't remember them having one and a half inch hardware, but it's been a while since I've looked. We're going to proceed with what we can do with the bag. We're just not necessarily going to cut out the straps yet. And I'm going to stick with her idea here of the whole outside being the one fabric and the, the lining being a different fabric. Here we go, our dot dot dash bag. I have not been great about filling in my project sheets lately, which if I had filled in my project sheets, I would have known that I needed inch and a half hardware. So we've got that, we've got that. We're going to use the orange with silver zippers. I'm going to use those new chonky zipper uh, pulls that I have. I think that would be a statement. And then see, if I had done this, I would have known that I needed one inch and a half rectangle and then one one and a half inch slider and those are both silver to match my my zipper so I like I said I'm gonna wait I'm not gonna cut out the handles yet I've got plenty of fabric to cut out either size handle with and what's nice about so sweetness is she gives you a very very detailed easy to read cutting list here <laughs> so um, since this is my printed pattern I'm gonna print out another copy of this page just so that I can check it off because I really do like checking off what we've got here so we've got yeah so we've just got that one pocket to cut and this week's cup of coffee is sponsored by our subscriber Barbara thank you Barbara uh, Barbara you know when she does a bit, she goes all out. So she didn't donate to the coffee website, which I will put right here below. Uh, the coffee website is just a way to support my channel. You can donate whatever you want if you're called to do so. Uh, I would appreciate it. Um, but Barbara, Barbara went all out. She mailed me a package. So she mailed me this beautiful mug. Look at this mug, it's so pretty and enough uh, Starbucks via instant packets to hold me in good stead for a while. <laughs> so if you see anything in this video that looks fast forwarded, it's really not, it's just me hopped up on coffee. <laughs> so thank you again, Barbara, and if you would like to donate and be featured on the channel, just go ahead and hit that link. I have a, a link in the description below as well. So let's continue on with the bag. You can see we have a directional print here, so what we need to do is think about that. And we'll need to put the pattern piece this way so that our print stays directional. And like we talked about in the last video, I'm going to leave a little bit of an overhang here. Um, just to give myself a little extra room on all sides. It's a good opportunity for me to go look at the patterns I have lined up for this. I've kind of just been reaching into the box and grabbing the next thing that looks interesting to me, usually because of the of the fabric colors that I'm most attracted to or the you know the pattern that I want to try next. So 
it's really been an interesting way to do it just just to reach in and grab the next thing without putting too much thought into it problem is is I don't necessarily have the hardware and the zippers set up for each of those bags so I need to go through the bags and make my list and figure out what hardware I need and portion it out and make sure that I actually have all the hardware that I need before we start this thing. Which direction do I want the straps? Which way did I say I want the straps? This way also, right? Well, we're not at our 32 anymore because this directional fabric's going sideways. We've only got 23 and a half, so I can't do it that way. So we're going to have to do, do it the other way. That's the problem I ran into also with the um, with the cork because the cork's only what 20 24 inches so the fact that it had to be 32 and a half the other thing oh actually what I should do is cut that in half because once we wrap around to the other direction this is going to be upside down okay so what we can do is cut two pieces so that it's going the correct direction down both the sides. Let's do that. Yeah, figure out the math here. So 32 and a half divided by 2 is 16.25, but we're going to have to add a seam allowance onto both sides. So we're going to add quarter inch to both sides. So we're going to do two pieces at 16 and a half by 5. So that'll give us, we'll have a seam at the very bottom of the side panel. Almost 27, but definitely not 27 and a half. I think we're going to have to sew three pieces together here. So we can do it this way. Let's do it this way. I can definitely get three pieces out of that. And so this is really long. It's like 54 inches long. I basically had to sew three pieces together. And now we're going to fold it and fold it again. Do our usual thing to it. try and overlap a little bit so that this top is a little bit further over the edge not exactly aligned with the bottom because we want a little bit of a lip when we take it to the sewing machine so here you can see what we did with the side panel because we need it to come up and over we need this side to be upright and this side to be upright of the pattern so that's that's how you do that. So we just sewed it in the middle and put the foam on. And now we're ready to put the bag together. And I am gonna line up the actual exterior fabric more than the pocket piece. If the pocket, see how it's a little off? I'm not gonna worry about that as much. Okay, so now we're gonna sew this pocket together, but there's obviously an overhang down here from, um, you know, the, the portion of the zipper. So we're gonna cut this so it's straight. It's gonna be kinda hard for me to do on the left-hand side here. So we've got an even edge, and then we're just going to sew these two together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, just on the bottom, because we're going to come back in a minute and baste these sides down like we did last week on the other bag. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to do for now. The next step is going to be tapering this 
on either end. So we'll pick this back up tomorrow. Now this step is pretty unique to So Sweetness bags, but she does this a lot. So we are gonna fold these together and we're gonna make a mark that's one inch in and nine inches down. So we're gonna line up this corner with one and nine and we're gonna make a mark down here and up here. And then we're gonna connect the two dots and this is what we're gonna cut off. And same thing on the other side. Just did all of that off camera. So here we have our, our lining. We've just sewn this in. And then I realized that this is gonna be a little shorter than this because we just sewed this in. So we're gonna kind of have the same thing we had last week where the lining is a little shorter than the exterior, but yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I, yeah, I just went ahead and did the same zipper end that we did for the Evelyn bag, and I constructed this the same way as I did for the Evelyn bag. Only difference is I used her measurements for the, um, the sides of this, because this bag is tighter, so I wanted to honor those measurements. So we got that all in here. The only issue I'm gonna have at this point is that we're doing a half an inch seam allowance and that means I don't, I don't want to get my zipper my zipper ends here stuck in the seam allowance because that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. So now we are going to find the halfway marks, mark everything, and then put the gusset on. I'm going to start with the lining just because I already have the orange thread in my machine. <clears throat> One thing you can do is you can clip the zipper here at this point, just to make sure it's like not gonna poke into your seam allowance at the last second. Okay, so I'm gonna clip a little bit into this just because weird. Okay, so that should curve around nicely when we go to sew it. I feel like you see the same thing every week, so maybe we'll just include uh, more of a vlog. Uh, yeah, I really miss the vlog style that I had going on in Vlogmas and Vlogtober. I'd like to incorporate that in. I feel like I'm doing a tutorial here and I'm not because I'm sharing step-by-step -step tutorials with you. So I don't know why I'm doing it this way. So yeah, we should do more of a day in the life kind of thing. I'll think about that for future because I'm kind of torn between doing the whole bag process for you and filming that and doing other things in my life. Okay, so all in all, not too bad. Um, the foam does tend to get away from you sometimes, especially on those curves. 
So that's the only downfall with that, like here on the back end. Um, but now that it's sewn down, we can go over it again and it's gonna be a little bit easier the second time around. So I don't know if you can see, but I'm basically just gonna go over like a 16th of an inch. I'm still gonna have those stitches visible. right side out so we can attach our strap mm -hmm. also take a look at all of our stitches and make sure nothing's super wonky I didn't feel like anything went too far astray so I think that's as close as I'm gonna be able to get it when it comes to gussets that's pretty Okay, so now we have our strap and our connector, and we've already got the connector piece and the D-ring put together, and then we're going to have to attach our slide. Okay, so we're going to attach this here, and baste it down. I'm just going to kind of center it there between the two points and we're going to base that down. Okay, and now we're going to feed the slider through one side. I can't remember which side is the clean side. So we need to clean up these ends. These ends are not clean. Okay, so we're going to attach one end through here and then ooh that's that's pretty tight and then we're going to have to fold it under and over so we can sew that down like that okay so you guys know the trick that I do putting my green tape underneath my machine it's a great trick try and get some height so I center it there and push it push the tape out now the only problem with this is that it's not really stable so the machine can kind of move around when that's happening but you can see the the tape is under here so we've lifted up our entire machine just enough to get this bag underneath without losing all of our clips it's just easier to sew it this way than it is the other way so we're gonna pick I think I'm gonna start from the other side because the side with the zipper with the pocket is the front so we will start on the back Oof. Get that all the way in there. Okay, so let's add this up here. So it took me 330 minutes divided by 60. Oh wow. 5.5 hours. That's about the same amount of time as the last one. Well, that's really good and it looks super cute. And it's got the crossbody strap, so it's a, a larger version of a crossbody. We got our little serotonin boost there by checking off our project. Yeah, very cool. And I like the combination of the whole outside of the bag being in that one fabric. And the handle being that fabric, it's just very clean. There's not a lot going on. It's just letting that beautiful fabric shine. So, yay! Let's take a look at it. Okay, so that's another week in the bag. And in the bag, haha. -ha. Uh, so I want to show you our finished product. So here we have the dot dot dash bag from So Sweetness. It turned out really cute. 
Normally, I am not restrained enough to use the same fabric for the entire bag, but it just adds a level of professionalism and it ties together so beautifully, and it's such a beautiful fabric in the first place that it is worthy of being the whole bag. We did our chunky inch and a half handle, which I really love. It's an adjustable strap. So you'll see that this one side has the, has the ring and it's sewn in, and then the other side is just sewn in. And I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else except for one of uh, the Sew Sweetness patterns. And then we have our interior with our zipper, which just worked out. So it covers the whole bag, but we didn't sew it in because the pattern had us sewing this in. So yeah, it's really pretty. This only took me five and a half hours, which I was very surprised about because normally a bag this big would take me a lot longer than that. So that means that I can offer it at a pretty good price point. I don't know what that is yet. I'll have to do the math. <laughs> but um, overall, I think it's a beautiful bag. It's a beautiful shoulder bag. It's got the cross body strap. So it's a very versatile bag to offer in the shop. Um, and I've got all those beautiful rifle paper company fabrics that would be beautiful to feature on the whole outside of the bag. So this is definitely a pattern that is staying. It's definitely a keeper. <laughs> so I originally gave this a B plus, but I have added another plus. So it's a B plus plus now <laughs> because it's amazing what happens when you actually follow the pattern. It works out a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, I really love that size. Um, I'll put that in rotation. I'll set aside some of that beautiful fabric to use for this pattern in the future. So that's it for this week. Um, I've decided I'm going to change the format of the videos a little bit. You will have heard me hemming and hawing about that earlier in the video. I just feel like it's all overhead shots of the bag and that's really not what I wanted to do when I started out. I wanted to, this to be more of an artist vlog, um, seeing what I'm doing inside my studio. Unfortunately, most of the stuff that happens in my studio is on the weekends because I have a full-time job. So it's kind of hard to film stuff like throughout the week. It generally happens over two days. Uh, but I do want to take you on more of the things that I'm doing on a regular basis and maybe showing some editing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm showing, but I would definitely like it to be more of a handheld vlog style. So that'll be the goal over the next few weeks. I'll kind of cut down that repetitive content. It's also because we're making a bag every week and most of the bags have a very similar process that there's really no need for me to show you. Me making the entire bag and talking, I just tend to babble on <laughs> if, if given the chance. So it makes these videos very long. Let me know your thoughts below on if you like that or if you've been enjoying more of the step-by-step yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to strike a balance. And then thank you again to Barbara for being our coffee sponsor for the week. I really appreciate it. And you're keeping me energized with all that caffeine. I want to thank you for joining me and coming and keeping me company this week. Have a wonderful week ahead. Love you. Bye. <laughs>